It's a business that has seen blood and conflict. It's an industry that has blocked the streets in anger. It has more than 15 million customers a day. Yet it can make you a fortune. That's why people in South Africa are fighting over the taxi industry. The North Taxi Rank one of the busiest and biggest in South Africa. In Johannesburg, this rank is the heart of the privately owned taxi industry. Situated at the heart of the Johannesburg CBD, the Nord Taxi Rank, or the MTN Taxi Rank as it's famously known, is the busiest in South Africa and one of the busiest in the African continent. In the city of gold, the taxi business can mean gold for the grandchildren, or can it? As South Africa goes through tough economic times, the owners of this industry are also feeling the pinch. Conflict is brewing. Most drivers here are angry. The threat of a strike is in the air. The customers aren't happy either. Every day, hundreds and thousands of people move through this taxi rank. They may struggle to do so in future. Many are struggling as the cost of taking taxis keep increasing. If you're looking from where I'm from, it's already 18 rand. So 36 in a day, that's just a job. So for, it's quite more. And sometimes you get two taxis. So it's looking plus minus about 60 or 70 in a day. Taxi fares are too high because we get paid very little. If the taxi fares were to go up, I would cry because that means everything will go up as well. It shouldn't go up because if it goes up, because per a rate, like from here to a Carlton Centre, it's like 11 rand. And when you have to, from Carlton Centre to another, Maybe it's six rand, so it's quite expensive. So like, they shouldn't like raise it up. I think the budget should stay the way it should, it should be right now. Hate them or love them, taxi drivers work hard. This is 24 hours of taxi movement in Pretoria compressed into 30 seconds. The dots represent taxis on the move. From dusk to dawn, they don't sleep. The numbers tell the story. 40% of 56 million South Africans use public transport. 9 million people use buses. 2 million use trains. The taxis get the lion's share with over 50 million people. 69% of every home uses taxis. That's a staggering 5,475,000,000 taxi trips every year. In an office far from the honking horns of the streets, this man is fighting for his fellow taxi drivers. Sitlem Kize owns six taxis and he's the face of the biggest taxi association in the country. Even though I can't give you the exact number, but we have over 3,000 taxis because we have 114 taxi ranks and routes. Because of the capacity of the routes we have, we are the biggest association in South Africa. The Toyota Quantum is a four-wheeled fly in the ointment. It came to South Africa from Japan in 2006 with its price tag ranging around 220,000 Rand. The government encouraged everyone to buy them to modernize the industry. By 2008, it escalated to 300,000 Rand, which was a worry for drivers. We complained because the quantum is too expensive at 300,000. Toyota should rather build them from scratch here in South Africa. They agreed and then there was a six-month period where the quantums were out of the market. They then came back in November 2015 at a heftier price tag of 360000 At the beginning of this year in January, it was 400000 It's even worse now. The Toyota Quantum is now manufactured in Durban with its price ranging around 500,000 Rand, not too far shy of the price of a house. There's no difference now whether they assemble it here or not. We wanted Toyota to build it here so it can be cheaper. Instead, it's more expensive now. It's a burden because it now wants a 15,000 installment. In our line of work, it's difficult to increase our taxi fares because we understand that the commuters using our taxi get paid next to nothing where they work. We want to go to strike because Toyota is eating our man. Their Toyota Quantum is too expensive at 420,000. 
Every month they want 15,000, yet we only make 8,000 a month. You'll never be able to have a quantum, feed the, feed the children back at home and still pay 15,000 per month. The taxi industry is pained by the price of the Toyota Quanta. They're too expensive, it's too much. That's absolutely no profit. I don't see why the government allows the price of quantum to be this high. When it got here, it was around 250,000. It must remain there and not escalate to half a million, like you are buying an AMG. The organization that fields these complaints in the taxi industry is the South African National Taxi Council, Santaco. It represents more than 100 taxi associations in the Gauteng region alone. It is the biggest taxi union in the country. Ralph Jones is its chairman in Johannesburg who threatened to strike. Let us have a strike which will be which will target now SA Taxi Finance, you know, where they were charging a lot of uh, uh, interest rate at 28 percent and their repayments were over six years at uh, 15,000 so when you calculate that that you get it's a it's an amount over one million you know now how can you buy an asset for one million I mean you buy it for 400,000 the next thing you end up paying one million for it this is essentially our dealership. Um, the nice thing is that a taxi operator can come here uh, and he can, instead of just buying a car, he buys a business, he gets the vehicle, the finance, the insurance, uh, the car tracking device, everything in one transaction. The man whose job it is to try to help people afford these taxis, even when it's difficult, is David Hurwitz. Our cost of funding uh, to our client is higher, the, our offering is higher than a bank's. Uh, our finance would be at about 24.9%, uh, that, that, that would be the interest rate. We are about, call it 6% uh, or so higher than a bank. Um, firstly, what's important is that our mandate is to finance to what we call credit extension, so extend credit to a SME that a bank wouldn't lend money to. So we're going to create those SMEs by taking a higher risk, and for higher risk there must obviously be a higher reward. We have more of our clients going into default, um, and accordingly, you know, that needs to be priced for. In negotiations, lower rates will come at a cost. So what we have uh, said to um, the tax industry is that we will drop our rates uh, slightly. Unfortunately, what that will mean is that a certain segment of our customer base that typically would be able to qualify for funding now won't. So there is an element of the market which we'll have to exclude again, which is a real pity. Um, because if we can't price for that risk, we can't make a profit on that loan, we can't get our money back on that loan, and you know, for that reason, we'd have to be, um, you know, contract our credit extension. And then there's government. Many claim that all of this is merely government trying to phase out taxis by the back door. At the forefront of all these issues, we are certain that this is another way that the government is trying to phase out taxis. In order for us to be able to afford them, we have to increase prices for our passengers who will then run away from us and go on buses. The very same buses government is introducing. Mostly it was the government, the government come to the party. We are not being subsidized. Uh, like other modes of transport who are getting a subsidy, billions of rents on a yearly basis per annum and we don't have operation license they're not coming out our 22 seaters our midi buses are not uh, licensed uh, yet when you see a new problem on the block uh, uber uber is being licensed uber is operating without routes without documentation without anything uh, that's where we looked at now. Let's do something about this. Yeah. Governments elsewhere in the world understand what SA Taxi and the minibus taxi industry is doing and we would hope that government would finance this industry as well.
to date they have not put a lot of money uh, uh, into the taxi industry in the form of finance. We carry the same passengers, same as buses, but because government wants to see us defeated, it puts us together with private cars on the roads to face heavy traffic, while buses have designated lanes. All this to take away passengers from us and send them back to buses. Another way of phasing us out, because no passenger wants to be late, meaning they'll go to buses and their traffic-free lanes. They give us a hard time when it comes to permits. They don't want to give us permits to operate. We aren't happy because on the road they stop us all the time, wanting the very same thing that they give us difficulty in having, which is a permit. These were just some of the issues that threatened to shut down South African roads on a taxi strike that was set for July. Santaco suspended the strike at the last minute after government got everyone around the table. We agreed that there's going to be committees formed which will be looking in all those aspects that we had problems with. You know, uh, the problems of funding, the problems of uh, operation license, the, operation, the problem of subsidy, uh, the the unfair competition, like now there's this unfair uh, commission that is in place. So there are going to be committees established to look into this thing. CNBC Africa made repeated attempts for government side of the story, but unfortunately these attempts proved fruitless. Before, the government was not prepared to talk to us. But now, yeah, they come into the table, so why not play a game of how to get, you know? Now we're looking at, let's meet each other halfway. We know we won't get everything right overnight, but I mean, there should be a synergy that goes with it, that as we move forward, what can come up? It's the biggest mover of people in South Africa and across the continent. Millions depend on it for transport to and from work. It could be heading for chaos and conflict. A taxi strike could halt business in South Africa, losing the country billions of rands. If not faced head on, the industry that moves most African people could be remembered as the industry that caused all the trouble.